Hello, I'm Derek, and welcome to Hindsight 101, where you learn about things that will help you in everyday life. Now, if you want to know how and why to make an Ethernet cable, I'm here to show you how. Thanks for watching Hindsight 101. Click the subscribe button and select the notification bell to stay up to date. So first, let's talk about the tools that you're going to need. There's only one main tool that you're going to need, and that's the crimper. Everything else I'm going to show you in this video is optional and you can just go back to basics and use whatever you need to get that done. I'll talk about it as I go through the video so you can get an idea of alternative uh, pieces of equipment you can use if you don't have these tools. This is the crimper and this is the plastic part. This is how you uh, lock down the plastic part to each end of the ethernet cable. So first you're going to need to cut the cable length that you need. So this is a short cable run that I probably would use to connect my router to my modem. Then you're going to need the little plastic end to put on the end of your ethernet cable. So this is what it looks like. You can purchase these in bulk at any big box store or online, whichever one's easier. So like I said before, you don't need all the tools that I'm going to use, but it does make it a lot easier, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of cable. And I'll have everything linked below so you can purchase them yourself if you'd like to. So you want to at least have about, about three inches worth of cable extra from what you need. The inch is all you really are going to need, but the extra two inches is in case you make a mistake. So just put that in there, spin it around a bit. And with this, you could probably use a razor blade if you needed to. But uh, this is a little bit better because you just want to cut the blue piece. You do not want to cut the wires. If you cut the wires, you have to start all over again. So you really want to avoid that. So now that you have the wires, you just want to separate them. Side note, the difference between Cat5e and Cat6 cable the main difference is this little white piece. There's some other things, but you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, so you can follow along this video and it'll teach you how to do Cat 5e if you don't, if you didn't purchase Cat 6 cable. Once you do this, you're going to want to cut your cable. There you go. It's cut. So now you're done with that. Um, you can twist these by hand, but as before, if you're going to be doing a lot of these, it gets a little tedious. So a trick that I found um, online is they just use the uh, sheathing that came from it and you just spin it down. Granted, this might take more time, but it does save your fingers. All right, so now that you have your cables undone, um, you can straighten them out by hand if you prefer. I like to use the method of taking a screwdriver and straightening it out that way. It goes a lot quicker. You can also use a pen if you prefer, but just something rounded and it straightens them out much, much better. Now that we have them straightened, we have to put them in order. So there's two ways you can go, and I'll display it on the screen. You can do A or B. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I've gone, I've checked to see back and forth which one, um, but it really makes no difference. It's just whatever you go with, you have to make sure both ends match that color coding that you choose. So if you go with A, but the port in the wall is B, that doesn't make a difference. It only makes a difference if both ends are the same. That's all you have to worry about is A, A, B, B. You can't do A and B. That will not, that's not what it's going to, that's, that won't work. The thing that makes Cat6 difficult is that white plastic piece in the middle, because um, you have to put all these kind of in order and that gets in the way, whereas Cat5e doesn't have that and it's not as bad. So let's get to it. So once you get the desired length you want, you're going to want to cut the ends off so they're even. So now that you have the lengths even, you're going to want to put them into the plastic end that goes on your ethernet cord. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's slots that each of these will slide into. And that's what you're supposed to put it in. So the correct way is put the little tab at the bottom and do that for each side. And then you're just going to want to work it in So as you can see, 
they're in. You just want to verify that the colors are the correct uh, order they're supposed to be in. I also forgot to mention these little plastic pieces come in two variations. This is called a pass-through. The other one, the wires would stop right here at the end. Um, advice is you'd probably want to cut them shorter. I've noticed it's a lot easier when you do that for the ones that stop here. But if you want the pass-through and making it long, the cable longer works out a lot better. And then you just pull it through. And you want to push it. You want to push it so to make sure that the blue is past this part here because this is where it's going to crimp down and hold it. So you want to make sure that blue sheathing is as far in as you can get it. Now that I've worked it in, maybe give it a little push in there. I'll cut the ends off. And then I'll get it as close as I possibly can. Oh, that's fun. And as you can see here, it sticks out a little bit. What you want to do with that, this is why I tried to push it in so far, is you're just going to pull back just a little bit and I kind of do a twisting motion so that brings them all back evenly and then now you can see that let's see if I can get it just right the wires are flush so nothing is sticking out and that's kind of how you want it now that you have the cable exactly how you want it you're going to want to take the crimper and crimp it. So for this one, you're gonna to wanna to do the bigger hole because the smaller one is for like a telephone line. Just take that, push it in like so, and then you give it a good squeeze. Do it a couple times just to make sure it's in there. And as you can see, right there is where it's crimped. And as I told you before, it pushes down that piece right here, right on there. So that's why you want to make sure the sheeting's there. And then now you have a perfectly good cable. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm going to display my test one that I made before um, that's already done. But like I said, make sure both ends are the same. So if you go A, A, B, B, but now that you have that, you can get a cable tester. So it tests to make sure you put them in the right order and you have a good connection. Everything will light up. These are fairly inexpensive. So you want to take one end and put it in the correct port. Take the other end and put it here. And then what you want to do is turn it on. And then it'll display. It'll go through a series and check all of them. And also, it does it on the other end as well. And it goes through all of them. As long as everyone lights up green, you're good to go. If it lights up red, that means one of the connect, well, one or more connections are bad. So I hope this helped. If it did, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And if you want to stay up to date, ring that bell. Thank you. Take care.